All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot. That exciting story of whaling days and buried treasure. Captain Dalton and First Mate Wainwright, assisted by Johnny and Sue, and led to the spot by Paul Parrot, have discovered Dickon, where he was held in the old shack by Red Mulhooly and Ezekiel Kipp. Although Kipp and Mulhooly had planned to ambush the captain and Wainwright near the shack, their plan was upset by Johnny and Sue, who rolled rocks on them from the rear. In a rage, Mulhooly knocks out Kipp and flees. And at this moment, old Smoky Mouth begins to erupt in earnest. Captain Dalton, Wainwright, Dickon, Johnny, and Sue take shelter in a cave they discover nearby. Just as the force of the eruption begins to slacken, Kip comes upon our friends from the rear of the cave and starts shooting. Everyone drops to the ground. And it is in this predicament that we find our friends as... Get you raise that gun again. You'll never make another move. Hey, where'd you come from? He lovers? Jowett, you got here just in time. Back and down the hatch, it's Jowett and Buscara. Coming from the back of the cave. Throw down that gun on the ground. Stand aside. All clear, Captain Dalton. You can rise now. Blow me down. We've had a number of close calls tonight. But I'd like to know how the second and third mates got ashore. You were left aboard the Paul Parrot only an hour ago, Jowett. Well, sir... When we aboard the Paul Parrot saw the volcano here uh, go into action for fair, we were feared for your safety, sir. But it started to rain about 30 minutes ago, so we left Mr. Nicholson in charge of the Paul Parrot, and Mr. Grange and Buscara and me with a handful of men come ashore to hunt for you. Aye, aye. And it looked like we no find you too soon. Men, I'll not forget your ready assistance. You may lay to that. But I can understand where you came from. Yes. And old man Kip here came from the back of the cave, too. There must be another entrance. Aye, aye, Miss Sue. You're right. We headed, first of all, straight for the mine we were to work. And when we got there, we found a trench dug in front of it that looked suspicious. Blow me down. That's the bloomin' pitfall I fell into when we first found the mine. Aye, Dickon. That's what Mr. Grange told us. And he had a hunch that it might lead somewhere. So he told us to climb down into it and find out while he stayed at the mine. We climbed below, found a cave opening into it, and it led us here. And just in time to catch this rat of shooting at you. But why did Ezra stay at the mine? Well, it seems something happened to it. Something's happened to the mine. Blow me down, Kip, if you've done something to this mine. Don't oh. hit me. Don't hit me. You've got me now. I'll try to do you no more harm. That lover, Reginald Hooley, is Bill Scum. I found. I'm his mate no more. I throw myself on your mercy, Captain. Yeah, uh, you don't deserve any mercy, you buzzard. You might have killed us all with your blasted wild shooting. I know it. I know it. I always go wild when I get my hands on a gun. But I swear I'll do no more harm. And I swear I ain't done nothing to the mine since he saw it last. Ah, he's a rat. He's a builder rat. Give me a little rat. Ah. Do that, Paul. Well, Captain, we'd better be getting to the mine and see what Mr. Grange found. Aye, aye, Dickon. We'd best put on full sail and steer our course to the mine. We may as well go back through the cave, the way Jowett and Buscara came in. That's a short course. Right you are, Mr. Wainwright. Ah, then, Kip, this is your own private passage to the mine, huh? Aye, Captain. It's a natural cave, and I found it when I started to work the mine. Then I dug that pitfall at the head of the cave, just ahead of the mineral deposit, to trap anybody who blundered ashore and got too curious about what I was doing at the time. Ah, uh, it's all getting clear now. Do you realize, Kip, that you haven't any right to work this mine anymore since you've sold out your interest to Mr. Grain some years ago? Aye, aye. But I was hoping he'd never follow up my map. Ah, uh, you're a villain, Kip. First you cheat your own partner, Jonathan Robbins, out of the map many years ago. And then you go back on your bargain with Grange. It's all gospel truth, Captain. But the vast, what's Grange doing for Jonathan Robbins? Robbins don't even know there's anyone looking for the treasure, which is rightful half his. He may not know of it, but he'll get his share. Mr. Grange will see to that. Avast, is he too, Kip? Do you know who this lad is here? No, me. I, I, I'll I, tell I, you who I am. I'm the son of the man you cheated. I'm the son of Jonathan Robbins. Oh, I thought so. I thought so. Lash me athwart. It's vengeance coming back on me for my own evil doing. I see it before my eyes. The very face of the man I cheated. I, mate, I'm scuttled. From now on, my fate is in your hands. What I get is coming to me. 
Kid, for all your evil doing, there's some good in you or you wouldn't admit it. I, for one, am willing to see you get a fair trial, and I'll go as easy on you as I can. You may lay to that. Thank you, Captain. You're a true seaman, a man's man, and one I'd be proud to work under. That scum O'Hooley never liked you, and now I can see why. His kind never sails with none but foul winds. O'Hooley? I had almost forgotten. I'm afraid he perished when your shack burned up back there from the hot volcanic ashes falling on us. He wouldn't come out. He didn't trust us. He's a tough swab, Captain. I doubt that you've seen the last of him. Look! The cave is leading into an open trench. It's the pitfall Dickens fell into yesterday. We can scale the side easy now. The slope we cut in the side to help Dickens out is still there. Avast! Avast! There's Mr. Grange and the men by the mine. Why? The mine's gone. Blew me down. I told you something had happened to it, sir. Avast, Mr. Grange. We're all here, safe and sound. Yes, thank heavens you're all here. Oh, Sue, my dear. Oh, Ezra, aren't you glad everything's cleared up? Indeed I am, Sue. And and Johnny, you're safe, too. And, and Dickens. Aye, aye, sir. All hail and all here's a pine spa. And uh, what's this? Ezekiel Kipp. So, you scoundrel, we've caught up with you. You tried to sneak out of your bargain with me. Mr. Green, sir, before your tongue lash me, let me say I yield all my rights to you. I've been a rat, and I'll take that as I have coming to me. Well, uh, well, this is a little unexpected. After all, I haven't always been very honest. My first plan for this treasure was to get it all for myself, leaving Johnny here out of his rightful share. But I, I saw my mistake when it was almost too late. I'm not exactly one who should criticize too harshly. Kip, we'll talk it over later. Right now, we've another problem on our hands. Now I see what's happened here. Blow me down. During the eruption, a whole slab of the mountain slipped down and covered up the mine. That's it exactly, Captain Dalton. It's covered to a depth too great to dig through. And most of it's rock. Then must we give up our search for the minerals? You can't do that. Mr. Grange, do you know just what this mine is? Well, Have I... you found that out? I only suspect, Kip. You know, you never told me exactly what it was when I bought your map. You only hinted. It's diamonds. Diamonds? Diamonds? Blow me. Diamonds. Oh, you diamonds. Diamonds. You see, uh, you see, when Jonathan Robbins and me came ashore here many years ago for water, Jonathan saw them strange rocks at the foot of the volcano. I'd been in Africa, and so I knew rough diamonds when I see them. So we knew we'd struck it rich, and no mistake. Well, blow me down. If it's diamonds we're after, we've got to get down to that mine. Yes, Captain, but I don't see how we can dig down to it with just picks and shovels. Hmm. Avast, I have it. Ascension Island, a British possession, lies south of this island of Galto. If we sail there, I'll wager we can buy explosives and blast this landslide from above the mine. Excellent, Captain, excellent. You've hit upon it. Let's start at once. Aye, aye, sir. We'll all head back to the Pal Parrot at once. Do you realize that it's morning? We've been ashore here all night. With the light from that volcano, we've been able to see everything, and we hardly realized it was dark around us. Lash me to a yard arm. We could all use a little rest. Aye, aye, Mr. Waymarsh. <laughs> Ahoy, men, to the beach. We're heading for the foul parrot. Now, first we'll cut in the whale that Dickon caught and that we've been towing for several days. And then in a couple days, we'll be sailing into Georgetown on Ascension Island. Even Paul Parrot's got treasure on his mind. <laughs> Blow me down, lass. Why, we're all excited about it. I'm surprised that we should find diamonds on an island in the middle of the ocean. It doesn't sound right. Well, Johnny, as I understand it, Captain Dalton says diamonds are pure carbon and are found in places where there was once volcanoes. I know all about it. My brother Ezra says that they're made by extreme heat and pressure in the earth. And, of course... Where there's volcanic activity, they're most likely to be found. Since the secret island of Gauber was just a big volcano, it's not surprising that you find them there. Well, blow me down, we've raised land. Avast, there it is, dead ahead. Look, 
It's Ascension Island. You may lie to that. Look at the big mountain. It's a good deal bigger than our island, but it looks a lot like it. Aye, aye, lad. Like all of these islands in the Atlantic, it's volcanic, very rocky and rough. That big mountain, Green Mountain, they calls it, it's a dead volcano. What part of the island are we heading for, Dickon? Well, Captain Dalton is setting his course for the settlement on the North Shore. Georgetown, they calls it. The people on the Bloomin' Island calls it Garrison because the island is owned by England and the British naval captain is the governor. There's a naval base there, too. And that's where Captain Dalton plans to buy explosives to clear the mine back in Goldtown. Oh, blow me down. I see something through the glass I don't like. Why, what's the matter, Captain? On this, the west side of the island, there's a big home owned by some English folks who came to Ascension Island for their health. You see, it's a healthy spot with its sun and steady climate. I've met these folks before when ships I've been on have stopped here for supplies. But, Captain, what's wrong about it? I can see the house plain through the glass here. And it's on fire. On fire, sir? Aye, Dickon. And there's a strange ship at anchor just off the shore near us that I don't like the looks of. You see, the house is out of sight of the garrison at Georgetown. And this is the way I chart it. Some blasted privateer is raiding the home. They're wealthy folk, and they'd make good game for some sea rats I know of. Captain Dalton, what are you going to do? I know what I'm going to do. Helmsman, Mr. Nicholson at the helm. Change your course. We're not putting ashore at the garrison. Head for the west shore. There's trouble there, and I plan to straighten it out. Ah! Breakers ahead! Breakers ahead! It looks as if our friends no sooner get out of one tight place before they find themselves in another. Will Captain Dalton have a fight on his hands when he meets this ship he suspects of being a privateer? Just what is happening at the burning house on Ascension Island? Now that we know the mineral treasure is diamonds, the search back on Galto will be more exciting than ever. And by the way, what has happened to Red Mulhooly? Is he still alive? To follow the further adventures of Captain Dalton and his friends... Be sure to listen to the next episode of The Cruise of the Paul Parrot. Your Paul Parrot announcer is Dave Ward.